Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good morning and welcome to the 1904 Lounge ahead of our final scheduled Skybet Championship game of the season on this beautiful, beautiful sunny May day. Rotherham United, 12.30 kickoff, hoping to cement fourth place today and have that home leg second round advantage against Derby County. Two special guests today. Firstly, please, would you put your hands together for a man who was the manager of the Tigers in the mid-80s, got us promoted in a very successful period of the club here at Boothbury Park, ended up back here years later as the assistant to Phil Brown and once again having another very successful period for the club. But this time at the KC Stadium, it's Brian Horton. Come on, come this way, come this way, come this way. And our other special guest today is a proper good quiz question. The man who captained the Tigers through the divisions and of course culminating with probably the greatest day at that point in the club's history, holding aloft the playoff trophy final on that great, great day after beating Bristol City at Wembley. Please would you welcome a man who played for the Tigers 243 times, a proper captain, Ian Ashby is here. Hello. Hello. Gentlemen, welcome back, Ian. Um, w firstly, um, I know you're here against Leeds United. I know that we've been shuffling the pack a lot, um, and I know that things would be a little different. Um, do you think we'll be going full strength today? Uh, yeah, I think they will. I think they want to get a, a good performance in before the playoffs start. So I think they'll go full strength. I think he'll pick his team that he'll probably st or think about starting against Derby, to be fair. So yeah, I'm expecting him to go uh, full strength. Who stands out for you this season? Um, Livermore stood out for me a little bit. He's had yeah. all his you know, trials and tribulations, which happens in anyone's life. Um, but obviously, it's a little bit more in the media once it's a footballer. But I think he's done really well to kind of bounce back from it, really. Um, you know, Robertson's done really well. Lucas has done well. So it's, but Livermore, for me, stood out, uh, to be honest. And um, you know, I'm really pleased for him. I know him personally a little bit you know when the, they buy the watches off me so he's um he uh you know he's done really well and didn't take long for you to get the plug in for the no, for the watches which company is that again ian uh, it's, it's on the screen blows jewelers yeah, it comes in yeah, it's yeah. Like every 15 seconds it comes on or something so, yeah. <laughs> this time next week we'll be getting ready for the first leg against derby county of the playoffs so when you were back uh playing and and we were getting lined up to play watford in the two legs mm. What was going through your mind? Were you thinking different things than the normal run-of-the-mill season? Uh, yeah, there's a little bit more pressure, of course there is. Um, you know, it's back in the day when we hadn't been in the top flight for a number of years, it was um, there's probably a slight bit more pressure on you. It was, uh, it was a club that a lot of the lads had been together and you know people said we weren't good enough to do this or do that, but we proved people wrong and um, there was probably a bit more pressure. Uh, but, you know, we dealt with it and it, it's a, it, it was a, a game that I, I fancied us away from our match, to be fair. You know, yeah. we was industrious and uh, we'd gone away all season and, you know, we'd, we'd, been, we'd been disciplined, listening to Nobby and the gaffer, Phil Brown, and, you know, we, we turned them over, to be fair. And on the final day at Wembley itself, I know there was a lot of confidence going through the squad that day. Would that be right? Were you fairly certain that, that we'd be coming home as a Premier League club? Yeah, I was, I was, I was pretty confident, to be fair. I don't think the game was the best, no. um, but, you know, we wasn't there to... I wasn't there to, to, to kind of make friends playing football. I was there to win a game of football and, and we did that and you know, the rest is history, really. Brian, we'll come to you. Welcome back. What are you doing with yourself these days? Um, I'm director of football at uh, South End with Phil. Yeah. So my role has changed uh, slightly, not being number two, that I watch games up here, watch the under-21s play uh, West Ham the other night, watch teams, watch players and then be with them on match days. Either if it's South End or up here, we're at uh, Bury tomorrow. So it's... Uh, the local one for me still living in Manchester. Of course. And do you get to take charge more often when he when he gets the odd bit of TV work when he scoots off? Well, it's quite a lot, isn't it? To yeah. be fair. Yeah. Uh, no, he's got a number two, Grant Coughlin, who, uh, who does that. But when I'm when I'm down there, I still put the tracksuit on and the boots on and go out with the players. And you know, Dino's just been upstairs. Peter Skipper, Dennis Boone, someone I've seen some of the other one. And that's the best part of the of football, being with the players on the, particularly training days when there's no pressure. But match days. We, we, we become different people. He was a different person. When, when, when you play football, you, you put that shirt on and you just become a different, different person, you know, same as. And I can't change from that way I was when I was player manager or being number two. I mean, me and him had rooks. 
when when I first came here. But Rooks, you know, they're, they're good for the team. They sort things out, and that's what he was. He was an inspirational leader. You mentioned Dino there briefly, very famously. As an 18-year-old lad, you, d you didn't fancy him, did you? You let him go. No, it wasn't. I didn't fancy him. He just couldn't run. <laughs> and he still can't run. But, yeah. uh, no, he was 17, and uh, we were having to make a decision whether we took him as a pro footballer. And he, he literally, skill-wise, skill he, was, he was the best, probably one of the best I've ever seen. But he just physically couldn't get around the pitch. And spoke to the youth team people that he still can't, he said. But like the goal he got at Wembley, I, I remember that... Leading up to that, it, it, before Wembley, I used to do a bit of finishing with him at the end of sessions, Dean Marnie. Ash never took part because his finishing was diabolical. So, uh, and Dean Windass came to me and said, can you do a bit of volleying, a bit of finishing? I said, no way, Dean. If you pull your thigh or something now, what, what's the manager going to say? And when he, after he scored that goal, I said to him, I told you you didn't need it because he didn't. Yeah. Technically, he was superb. What I said to him was, I got a free transfer when I was 17. Very small, very similar, skillful or semi-skillful. Uh, but again, very small and, and not, you know, uh, no, no strength. So I went into non-league, went on the build, and went to non-league, and I said the same to Dean, I can't prove me wrong, I hope you prove me wrong. And what did he do? He went on the building, went to North Ferriby, yeah. then he goes North Ferriby, and whatever he did in football, you know, which is fantastic. And, and I said that, he put it in his book, and I said to him, go and prove me wrong, which he did, and I'm, yeah. I'm delighted and kept in touch with him and could we keep in touch with the boys. They were a good set of lads, to be fair. I know that's used a lot, that they were a good set of lads, but they were... It was, I, think, I think that's what got us through there. We had a good individual players in certain areas, but I, th I think it was the team ethic that got us winning that game. Playoffs are quite divisive, are they? Some people love them, some people hate them. I suppose you love them if you actually make the final at Wembley. Um, how, how much did you enjoy that day with Phil? Well, the, the two games we've just been talking about upstairs, the first one away at Watford, we could have beat four or five, we could have been out of sight, you know, and uh, Watford were quite a long ball team at that time, and then 2 0 up, you think, cruising, and they came here and changed completely, played a diamond shape, played some good football, scored early on, and the whole crowd, you could feel the atmosphere just go bang, and then 2 1, and then we, we got a couple of goals that totally took the pressure off. And I, I, I said, and Phil said to me, going to Wembley, what do you think? I said, we'll not lose today. You know, the, the spirit amongst the clubs and, and everything was fantastic. I said, we'll, we'll not we'll lose to Bristol City. I know it took a late goal, but I, I, I had firm belief that we'd do it. OK, Ian, so the sun's out. It's uh, end of season. Rotherham may be on the beach. It's, we really need to cement that fourth place today. How do you think it's going to go? We're going to win. What score do you think it's going to be? Yeah, I think they've got to go out. I think um, it's sun's out, like you say. Rotherham are not really playing for anything, so... Um, you know, they need to cement that, you know, the last fixture being at home. I'm expecting them, we've got big game players for me, you know, from when we used, when I played and when players we had, they've got individual players who can turn it on a sixpence and win a game of football on their own. So uh, I'm expecting them to fully, you know, go out there and, and win, you know, two and three nil comfortably. Lovely stuff. Brian, how do you see it going? Uh, Rotherham have done really well. Neil Warnock's yeah, gone in with them being dead and buried virtually and uh, he's picked them, picked them up unbelievable. And they're well safe now, so I don't know. It uh, It all depends how people turn up on the last Saturday. You know, have they done enough now? Will they turn up? And it, it does happen uh, when when you've switched off and you, there's nothing to play for and your contract might be up and do you want to get injured and everything. So I expect Hull to win today. I'm not saying that Roland will do that because Neil's the type of person who will get them at it. But I think uh, Hull will win today. Gentlemen, absolute pleasure to have you both here today. Please, would you put your hands together? For former manager and former assistant manager and, of course, player as well, Brian Horton and captain Ian Ashby. Thank you, Ash. Thank you, Brian. Lovely to see you here today. We'll see you after the game. Thank you very much. Cheers, fellas.